So suppose you have this function x squared minus 2x5 plus 2y, and you want to find the absolute minimum, absolute maximum of this function bounded to a rectangle. X values are bounded between 0 and 3, and y values are bounded between 0 and 2. So you want to take a look at the graph for this rectangle. We have the following scenario. Here you have x-axis, and then you have your y-axis, and then you have your rectangle. Very good. Zero to three, and then zero to two. Very good. So what are the steps? In the very first step, we're going to find a critical value. Let us find the critical value. So what are we going to do? We're going to find the partial derivative of f with respect to x, which is equal to 2x minus 2y, set it equal to 0, and then find the partial derivative of f with respect to y, which is negative 2x plus 2. Very well. If you set this guy equal to 0, x becomes 1. And if you plug that in here, you get your y equals to 1 as well. So the critical point is one and one. So if I plug in one and one into the original function, f of one and one becomes one minus two plus two, which is one. So now we need to analyze what is this? Is this a minimum? Is this a maximum? But the thing is that your domain is bounded to this rectangle. So we need to take into account the boundaries. Now, since our function is bounded to D, this rectangle. So we need to work with the boundaries very well. So what are the boundaries? Let us just label these. Let us call this line segment L1, this line segment L2, this line segment L3, and this line segment L4. On L1, let's take a look at it. What do we have? We know that our x is bounded between 0 and 3. And what is the y value? The y value is just 0. All right. So take a look at your function. You have f of x and y bounded on this line is going to be f of x and the zero, which is x squared minus 2x zero plus two times zero or just x squared. So what's the meaning of that? On this line segment, you can reduce the function, original function into a parabola, right? Which is easy to analyze. On L1, we reduced the function to a parabola. But this is a parabola, x squared. When x is equal to 0, your parabola, 0 squared, is in its minimum value. And when x is equal to 3, then you have 3 squared or 9. X is maximum value. So, so far, we analyzed the behavior of this function restricted to L1. It says, hey, the minimum value is 0 and the maximum value is 9. Mean and the max. Okay, let us move on to L2, for example. On L2, what do we have? This is just a line segment, am I right? On L2, we have the following scenario. Our y is bounded between 0 and 2, and x is fixed, it's 3. Very good. So let's work with our function. Original function is going to be reduced to 3 and y, which is 9 minus 6y plus 2y, or you have a line. 9 minus 4y. This is a decreasing line, all right? 
decreasing one. Since you have a decreasing line, it takes its maximum value when y is equal to zero, am I right? So f of three and zero becomes nine, and it is the maximum value. The minimum value when y is equal to two, f of three and two is nine minus four times two, or just one. This is the minimum value of the function over this line segment L2. Now let us move on to L3. What do we have on L3? Well, well, on L3, we have another line segment. X is bounded between zero and three, and Y is two. So you can reduce the function to F of X and two, which is X squared minus four X plus four, you get another quadratic function or another parabola. But from mad 1a, from elementary calculus, remember that you can take the derivative of this function 2x minus 4 and set it equal to 0. x is 2. It's going to give you the critical value. When x is equal to 2, f of 2 and 2 becomes 4 minus 8 plus 4 or 0. Very well. So this function, which opens up, has a minimum at 2, which is 0. This is going to be our minimum value of the function. What's the maximum value of this function? Well, if you plug in, for example, here, take a look at this. Zero, f of zero and two becomes four. This is the maximum value of the function over L3. Now let us move on to L4 and then finally compare these values. Okay, on L4, y is bounded between 0 and 2, and x is 0. Very good. So we can reduce the original function into f of 0 and y, which is equal to 0 minus 0 plus 2y, which is just 2y, right? y is bounded between 0 and 2. You have an increasing line, so the maximum value is going to be f of 0 and 2, or four, this is your maximum, and f of zero and zero, which is zero, gives you the minimum. Very good. Now let's just compare these values, right? Maximum nine, minimum zero, and we have, if you plug in one and one into the function, you have one, which is less than nine, what else do we have? We have another nine. We have another one. And let's look for it. Minimum is zero. Maximum is four. Maximum is four. Minimum is zero. So comparing these values, all of these values together, show us that the absolute maximum of F is nine. And the absolute minimum of f is zero. 